So I have this routine of turning off all of the things that make noise in my apartment and closing all the windows and waiting for the computer to stop making that fan noise and waiting for the actual fan to stop fanning. And now there are two ducks out in the swimming pool of my apartment and they keep... It's like a dude saying the word Greg. And I have no control over it and I really just wanted to stop so I could make this video. Hi, I'm Kim Miner, and this is a spoiler-free review of Serafina by Rachel Hartman. I never picked quotes for this book. <laughs> so, I've just tried to find a quote that, like, adequately expresses how this book is written, how it feels, like, and I really can't. There's not a single paragraph that, that is particularly salient. There's not a uh, a single quote that is non-spoilery that I can I can just hand to you and say, oh yes, this is this is the essence of Serafina. This is the quintessence of Serafina. I really can't do that. So I guess I've already broken my streak of of one video in which I start a review with a quote. I first heard about this book while standing in a Barnes & Noble with my go-to zombie apocalypse squad. Not that we'd survive the zombie apocalypse, but they're a good bunch to do the whole once more and the breach dear friends once more thing with. Other people do that, right? Anyway, we're standing in there uh, looking through their YA section and um, a young woman named Gretchen is helping us and uh, it turns out she has uh, a Twitter that she reviews books and so like she and I got to talking. I have a note on my phone that's just a list of book titles and like occasionally like a single word note because she was going so fast and I was like I have to get all of these because they all sound so good. So what I have for, written down for this one is Serafina dash dash DRAGONS all caps three exclamation points. And that's an inadequate description of how wonderful this book is. The dragons of Rachel Hartman's mindscape are not your traditional dragons. They're not Khaleesi's children. They're not even Hagrid's Norbert. Imagine, if you will, Smog from Tolkien's The Hobbit plus Vulcans straight out of Star Trek. And those are Rachel Hartman's dragons. They are hyperlogical, they see emotion as weakness, and they really love shiny pretty things. It's Wednesday. No, Tuesdays are leaf blower days. Our heroine Serafina lives in a world where there is a very fragile peace treaty between humans and dragons that is fraying at the edges. Fear and prejudice has the human royal family placing more and more restrictions upon dragons. They cannot keep their natural form, their dragon form, they have to be human shaped. But because the dragons are now human-shaped, humans are afraid that the dragons will pass for human and then be sneaky and devious in their human shapes. And so the dragons are required to wear bells on their shoulders, thus distinguishing them from humans. They are similarly policed from the dragon side, living in constant fear of becoming too emotionally invested in their lives or their friends, and being summarily stripped of all emotions and memories by the censors. Dun dun dun! All the while, resentment is building on both sides, and mobs led by the extremist group the Sons of Ogdo attack law-abiding dragons. Which is a sentence previously unsaid. I'm pretty sure it was Ogdo. Can I like have some ticker tape going? Meanwhile, an extremist group called the Sons of Ogdo are radicalizing against law-abiding dragons. <laughs> I'm focusing. I'm focusing. All of this as the kingdom prepares to host Ardmagar Kaminat. Yes, uh, that is his title and his first name. He is the highest leader of the dragons for the 40th anniversary of the signing of the peace treaty. What could possibly go wrong? As you can see, there's some serious politics going on in this book already. <laughs> Serafina herself is something quite unusual and possibly illegal, insofar as an individual can be illegal. It's not a thing. Let's just be clear. Her father is a human lawyer, her mother is a dragon and a musician. Serafina just wants to make some music 
and be the assistant to the court composer, but she somehow gets like drawn into this investigation of a conspiracy, and really it's just gonna make her life very difficult. Rachel Hartman uses so many big words, it's fantastic. <laughs> it fits so beautifully with the half-dragon mind Serafina has. It's sharp as a tack, very precise and analytical to a fault. I'm not allowed to have gummy bears while I'm making a video. Hi, was I not paying enough attention to you? Was I not paying enough attention to you? And yet, her father, the human, is the lawyer, and her mother, the dragon, was a musician beyond compare. Serafina got her analytical abilities from her human genes, and her musical genius from her draconian genes. Ah! Therefore, dragons are more than the box that they have created for themselves, and humans are more than dragons give them credit for. <sighs> this book gives me feels. This book tackles big issues, and it does it messily and without bias, and gives it a solid perspective from both sides. And it's from the unique perspective of someone who is directly on the line between the two factions. I love it. Neither side is portrayed as the enemy from Serafina's uniquely balanced perspective. Prejudice. The dangers of groupthink. Immigration. Um, the concept of passing. And being of mixed... Species? Uh, the, the, the parallel is for mixed race. Fantasy gives us a unique ability to discuss things metaphorically, therefore making them more accessible. But it does put me in the awkward position of just having said the phrase mixed species. I'm so sorry. So when I was in elementary school, we did AR tests on every book that we read. It was essentially to prove that you had read the book by taking a specific test about that specific book, even if your teacher hadn't read that specific book. Essentially, it made me feel like I was constantly be call being called a liar because I would turn in a reading log that said I had read the book, and then, yeah, I was, I was a weird, I was a weird 11 year old. AR places this book at uh, level six, which is seventh to 12th grade reading level. And that just means that if you're above 13, you can read this material. Um, and I guarantee you that even as an adult, even as a well-read adult, you will still have to have your phone handy because Siri looked up so many words for me and it's great. You've got Serafina, your unlikely heroine. You've got Cakes, your unlikely prince slash captain of the guard. You've got Uncle Orma, your unlikely dragon scholar. And then there's Princess Glaselda, your unlikely soon-to-be ruler. Matriarchal society, queens all the way down the line. Overall, I would give this book four and a half out of five stars. The character development is given even-handedly. This is not the CSI Miami of YA fantasy. Political intrigue abounds. Important issues that we face in our modern-day society are showcased and made accessible to discussion. And you get to learn a bunch of new words! Like, what's not to love? Oh, did I mention it was steampunk? I don't think I mentioned that it was steampunk. Serafina by Rachel Hartman has some steampunk dragons and a lot of new words and some political discourse for you. Check it out. Let me know in comments if you have read the book and what you thought, or if you want to read it, or if it sounds like something that's up your alley. And yeah, if you know more books like this, recommend them to me. I'm always on the hunt for new recommendations. So yeah. Aviento.